Yo, what is going on, Fantasy Addicts? I'm your host, That Fantasy Addict, and we are so close to being done with the 12 team PPR mock draft series. We are now moving on to the 11th pick, and in case you haven't already seen, in my last video yesterday, I started a new series. It is a super flex mock draft series, 12 team PPR. So if you'd like, you can always feel free to go check out that video in case you're interested in super flex. And also, I did cover the breaking news of Derrick Henry's contract worth $50 million. So if you are interested in hearing about my analysis on the effect of that contract and everything, feel free to go watch that video when you're done with this one. With that being said, let's go begin this draft and see what kind of roster we can construct with the 11th overall pick. First up, we see Christian McCaffrey go followed by Zeke, Kamara, Saquon, Michael Thomas, Dalvin Cook, Nick Chubb, Joe Mixon, Derrick Henry, the man who just signed a contract worth $50 million with 25 and a half guaranteed, and then Devontae Adams. So it is now our pick, and the highest ranked player on Sleeper is Miles, is Kenyon Drake, excuse me, but I would prefer Miles Sanders there. We also have a bunch of receivers, but I'm not going to take one there. So this is kind of that range that, like I mentioned in previous videos, I don't really like drafting in. Although the 11th pick is not as bad because I do like Miles Sanders and Josh Jacobs, and sometimes I can get both of them. And that's what we're going to attempt to do here. I don't want Kenyon Drake. He's not worth a first or an early second round pick just because that risk is so tremendously high. Miles Sanders has the same upside with much, much less risk. So we'll take Miles Sanders. Then we see Kenyon Drake go off the board as well as Tyree Kill. So we did take a little bit of a risk, but it worked because Josh Jacobs fell to us. I won't even call it a risk because even if Josh Jacobs didn't fall to me, Miles Sanders would still have been the best pick there. So it's not really a risk, but we were really hoping that Josh Jacobs would be available. And sure enough, he is. So I am very glad about that. And it's not really a question, in my opinion. Josh Jacobs is definitely the pick here. He has a bigger floor than pretty much anyone else available at the running back position. And if he can be used a little more in the receiving game, he could be a tremendous fantasy running back this season. So we'll go with Josh Jacobs. Then we see Julio go off the board, followed by Patrick Mahomes, Aaron Jones, Lamar Jackson, DeAndre Hopkins, Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, Travis Kelsey, Austin Eckler, George Kittle, Kenny Galladay, Todd Gurley, Le'Veon Bell, Leonard Fournette, CEH, Chris Carson, James Conner, Adam Thielen, David Johnson, and Melvin Gordon. So first off, I saw Mike Evans go ahead of Chris Godwin. Not a good move there. Godwin was better last season, and now they bring in Brady, who loves throwing to slot receivers. Travis Kelsey and George Kittle both go in the second round pretty early, especially for Kittle, but it's not the worst pick. One thing that I notice is Le'Veon Bell and Chris Carson are not available at my pick, so I'm going to have to pivot my usual draft strategy, which almost always consists of drafting Chris Carson or Le'Veon Bell in the third round. So now we're going to do something else. So Allen Robinson, Juju, both of them are pretty good. We do have quarterbacks, but obviously we're not going to take one this early. We have Mark Andrews. He'll probably be someone who we take here. Because looking at the other running backs, David Montgomery is the only one who I would consider. But to be honest, this is a little too early. So I'm thinking we go with a wide receiver and a tight end. So it's very tough here. Allen Robinson would probably be my preferred receiver. But honestly, it's close. I feel like Juju has more upside, but also more risk. Don't like OBJ or Amari, like DJ Moore, like Cup, like Ridley. I really like a lot of those guys. So, you know, it's very tough for me. You could go with DJ Moore, you could go with Juju, you could go with Calvin Ridley. I think what I'm going to do is I would go with DJ Moore, but I'm not going to take my receiver yet because I'm fine with a lot of these guys. They're all kind of in the same tier for me. Mark Andrews, however, is not. He's not in the same tier as other players. I want him much more than Zach Ertz and Waller. So I'm going to take Mark Andrews to ensure that he is available by my next pick. So 
we saw Allen Robinson and Juju go right after our pick. No worries there. Even though I don't like OBJ or Amari, we have DJ Moore, Cooper Cup, Calvin Ridley. I think Calvin Ridley probably has a little more upside because I could, I probably see Calvin Ridley being a top three wide receiver in some world. Like, I think that's a chance. I don't really think there's a chance that DJ Moore is a top three receiver. But to be honest, if they're a top 10 receiver, that would pay off tremendously. And I think DJ Moore has more potential to do that. So we're going to take DJ Moore here. If you want to take Ridley, go for it. Or even Cup, go for it. But I like DJ Moore here. Then Amari goes, followed by OBJ, Jonathan Taylor, David Montgomery, AJ Brown, Robert Woods, Ridley, Mark Ingram, Cooper Cup, T.Y. Hilton, Devin Singletary, Dak, DK Metcalf, Kareem Hunt, DJ Shark, Tyler Lockett, Zach Ertz, Raheem Mostert, Keenan Allen, and Terry McLaurin. I swear, Terry McLaurin always goes right before me. Very annoying. So Waller is available, but we already have Mark Andrews, so no need there. Cam Akers is available. Love that. He fell quite a bit. He's usually not available, so I like that right there. Then we have Cortland Sutton, Stephon Diggs. No one I really like there. I'm fine with Devontae Parker, Michael Gallup, Tyler Boyd, those guys who I can probably wait another round for. At quarterback, Kyler fell to us, so I won't exactly say he fell to us, but there's not much value elsewhere, so we might actually consider taking Kyler here. I'm really trying to debate if we should take Kyler, because I know that I'm going to take Cam Akers. There's no question there. But I'm debating with my next pick. Should I take Kyler? Should I take another running back like Darius Geis? Or, and I'm not going to go with the receiver, or go with Darren Waller? Because even though we have Mark Andrews, Darren Waller is good. I like him a lot. And we could use him as trade bait. But the more that I think about it, you know, there is some risk there. Historically, middle, middle round tight ends aren't the best performing. And even though Darren Waller is borderline mid-round, you know, fifth round isn't exactly mid-round. It's kind of in between early and mid-rounds. I still think that there's too much risk there. So we'd probably go with Kyler, but Cam Akers is my number one priority. I love him. He's in such a great situation. There is an easy path to being a featured back here. So I can't afford to miss out on him because looking at this other team who's going to pick soon, they drafted three receivers in the last three rounds, so I'm sure that they would take Akers if we didn't. So we'll take him. Then they take Russell Wilson ahead of Kyler. Very interesting. And DeAndre Swift. So you know what? In a real draft, I probably would go with Kyler here, but we're especially going to do it in this mock draft because after all, mock drafts are about learning. So I want to learn if it's a good strategy to take one of these quarterbacks like Wilson, like Watson, like Kyler, or Dak, if they fall to you in the sixth round. So we're going to take Kyler and see how this team shapes up. Then Damian Williams goes, followed by Hollywood Brown, Stephon Diggs, Cortland Sutton, Deshaun Watson, Darren Waller, Devontae Parker, A.J. Green, Edelman, Ronald Jones, Drew Brees, Gronk, Matt Ryan, Jarvis Landry, James White, Darius Geis, Michael Gallup, Evan Ingram, J.K. Dobbins, and Tevin Coleman. And now we are up once again. So to start at wide receiver, I like Boyd. I think Debo Samuel is a decent play if you want to be on the riskier side of things. Marvin Jones, I love him. It's unfortunate that his ADP is rising, but even in the 7th or 8th round, I love him there. Quick look at tight end, because you never know. No one who I see worth it there. Then at running back, I really see no one. I don't like Keyshawn Vaughn, don't like Jordan Howard, don't like Mac. don't like Michelle. Alexander Madison is all right, but taking him this early is way too much for me. Matt Breida is a decent pick as well, but in the eighth round, it's a little early. I don't think he'll be available in the ninth round, but you never know. But I'm not going to count on it. At quarterback, I don't know why I'm looking at quarterback because we already have Kyler, but you never know. But obviously, no one there worth it. So looking at our roster, we have Miles Sanders, we have Josh Jacobs, we have Akers. Ideally, I would like another running back here and one wide receiver, but going with two wide receivers is not a bad strategy. 
So first up, we're going to go with Boyd because I want him. He's a very safe player. Then we see Brandon Cooks go and Hayden Hurst. So now it's really deciding if we want to take another receiver or if we want to go with a running back. But I don't think any running backs are really worth it here. So we could go with Debo Samuel. In the early eighth round, it's not a bad strategy at all. But to be honest, I feel like Marvin Jones has almost as much potential as Debo Samuel if Debo Samuel plays for a full season. But with that being said, we don't know if Debo Samuel is going to play a full season. For all we know, if he gets re-injured, he's definitely out for the entire season. So Marvin Jones has such a higher floor with a very, very comparable ceiling. So we'll go with Marvin Jones here. Then we see Jordan Howard go, followed by Deontay Johnson, A.A. Ron, Marlon Mack, Sonny Michelle, Tom Brady, Keyshawn Vaughn, Debo Samuel, McCole Hardman, Philip Lindsay, Tariq Cohen, Matt Breida, Carrion Johnson, Tyler Higby, C.D. Lamb, Alexander Madison, Will Fuller, Josh Allen, Hunter Henry, and Darius Slayton. And we are up once again. We have Latavius Murray. We have Zach Moss. We have Antonio Gibson. All of these guys, and Duke Johnson, all of these guys are guys who obviously I don't love. You know, they're not guys who I want to be starting. But it's a good bunch of guys that I like taking a chance on. I think some of these guys will be good. And I like spending, you know, 10th, 11th round picks on these guys as opposed to spending 8th, 9th round picks on Keyshawn Vaughn. Like, that's that's not what I'm trying to do. You know, I don't want to spend earlier picks on Keyshawn Vaughn. I'd rather have the Tavius Murray later. Then at wide receiver, we have Jamison Crowder. We have Rieger. I'm not super stoked to get any of them, though, especially because we have DJ Moore, Tyler Boyd, and Marvin Jones. At tight end, no one very worth it there. We might need to take a backup quarterback. I usually don't like taking them, but Kyler is a little on the riskier side, I would say. But to be honest, he's still pretty safe, and there's still some decent quarterbacks on the waiver wire, so we're not going to take one there. I think it's looking like we'll take two running backs. So Latavius Murray is a safer option, not as much upside. I mean, on certain weeks, he probably has more upside than anyone else available, because on the weeks that Kamara is out, Latavius Murray could easily get 20 points, but that's for one or two games. Zach Moss has realistic 12 point per game upside you know, on a weekly basis. Antonio Gibson has a little bit of upside as well. Same with Duke Johnson. Honestly, I might be able to wait for Duke Johnson. Probably not, but maybe I will. But I think the first player who I'll take is Zach Moss because he just has a ton of upside. Then San Fran defense goes and Latavius Murray. So they made it easy. They are giving us one less option. Now it's between Antonio Gibson and Duke Johnson. And to be honest, I'm going to take Duke Johnson here. Sure, he has very little upside for any week that he is not starting. But if he starts to outperform David Johnson, which is possible, I think that he could easily be scoring 10, 11, 12 points a game here. And if David Johnson gets injured and Duke Johnson becomes a starter, he is possibly a league winner. Honestly, you could go with Antonio Gibson if you wanted to. And I wouldn't really say anything bad about that. And you know what? The more I think about it, I'm going to go with Antonio Gibson here. He has a safer floor. We know that he's going to get snaps because he's either going to be used as a running back and get some carries and some targets or as a receiver and get a decent amount of snaps. So we'll take Antonio Gibson here. He has a good ceiling, not as high as Duke Johnson's, but still a pretty high ceiling and a much better floor than Duke Johnson. So we'll take him there. Quick change of thought right there. I know I initially said I'd take Duke Johnson, but we switched it up, taking Antonio Gibson here. Then Emmanuel Sanders goes, followed by Jerry Judy, Baltimore defense, Henry Ruggs, Carson Wentz, Henderson, Stafford, Jamison Crowder, Jared Cook, Tony Pollard, Cam Newton, Buffalo defense, Chase Edmonds, Pittsburgh defense, Noah Fant, New England defense, Justin Jackson, Christian Kirk, Daniel Jones, and Duke Johnson gets taken right before me. I really wish I could have gotten him with my 12th with my 11th round pick but unfortunately that's not going to happen so now it's time to look at our current roster and see what we might need so we have two running backs on our bench 
three running backs in our starting lineup, so we have five running backs, only three total receivers. So we'll look at the receivers. First thing I see, Jalen Rieger, like him as our fourth wide receiver. We'll probably take him. At tight end, Jacecki, Hawkinson, Smith, Goddard, all pretty equal in my rankings. Actually, Goddard and Jacecki a little higher, but I like them all, so we can definitely wait on one of them. At running back, I mean, Carlos Hyde's okay. Boston Scott's okay. Don't really like any of them, though. Big Ben is also available. So now that I think about it, maybe I'll take Big Ben on my bench. I'll take Jalen Rieger on my bench, and then some tight end on my bench. Either Goddard, Smith, Jacecki, Hawkinson, one of them. Because, yeah, we have three bench bots, so we'll do that. Now, it really depends. Who do I take here? Rieger or Big Ben? Looking at this other team, he only has one quarterback, so that is a little scary. He has... A few wide receivers, I'm not sure if he's going to take a wide receiver or a quarterback. This is really, really tough here. You know, it's tough, but honestly, I'm okay with Drew Locke. Jimmy Garoppolo's all right. Jared Goff's okay, so I'll take Rieger. Rieger's a little more important here. So we went with Rieger, then sure enough, Big Ben went, and so did Justin Jefferson. So no worries there because, you know, at the end of the day, we have Drew Locke. He is my, well, you can go with Jared Goff as well. So it's really between Locke and Goff at this point. You know what? I'm going to go with Goff. I usually want one piece of this Rams offense, preferably two, in most drafts because I really like this offense. I think they're going to be great for fantasy. Jared Goff's going to be thrown all over the place. So we'll take Goff here. But if you want to go with Locke, go with him. It's fine. I think he has more upside, but he also has a little more downside as well because they could go very run heavy. Then after we take Goff, Baker goes, followed by Sterling Shepard, Boston Scott, Anthony Miller, Sammy Watkins, Nikhil Harry, Anthony McFarland, Austin Hooper, Drew Locke, Chicago defense, Michael Pittman, Deshaun Jackson, Brandon Ayuk, John Brown, LA Chargers defense, Naheem Hines, Joe Burrow, Preston Williams, TJ Hawkinson, Justin Tucker, and it is our pick. So we have that one remaining bench spot, and that is going to go to Goddard. I love Mark Andrews. He's very safe. So we're just going to take a safe backup tight end in Dallas Goddard, who for the few weeks that Mark Andrews is on by and out with an injury, Goddard can come in, and we know he'll get us 8 to 12 points. And if Ertz goes down, Goddard is definitely a top 5 tight end, no doubt about it. So we'll take Goddard right here. I love him. And then... After we take him, we see Mike Jacecki go and Harrison Butker. So it's time for us to take our defense. And I see Seahawks, Saints, Rams. You know, honestly, you can go with anyone with defense. It doesn't really matter. But I'll go with hmm, the Saints defense. I do think that they're a little better on paper. And yes, they do have a great offense, which could lead to them giving up more points on defense. But I just think that their defense is a little better on paper. So we'll take New Orleans defense here. But if you honestly want to go with any defense, it doesn't really matter. Then Phillip Rivers goes, followed by Greg Zerline, Will Lutz. Tampa Bay defense, Blake Jarwin, Robbie Gould, Young Ho Koo. Green Bay defense, Zane Gonzalez, Fairbairn, Johnny Smith, A.J. Dillon, Dan Bailey, Jamal Williams, Carlos Hyde, Matt Prater, Fairbath, Darrington Evans, Minnesota defense, and Armstead. So we are almost the Mr. Irrelevant in this draft, but not quite. We're taking a kicker, and Matt Gay is a guy here. I like him a lot this season. Goskowski was always good under the Tom Brady-led offense in New England. Why wouldn't Matt Gay be great for fantasy under Tom Brady in Tampa Bay? They should be doing a lot of scoring, not a lot of stopping on defense, so they'll be in shootouts. Everything should be good, so we take him. And then the Mr. Irrelevant is Brashad Perriman. So let's do a quick recap of our team here. First up, Kyler Murray, top five quarterback. He really has a floor of almost a quarterback one. It's very hard to imagine him not being a quarterback one. And his ceiling is definitely the quarterback one. He could easily be the top quarterback in fantasy football this season. Miles Sanders, Josh Jacobs, the sophomore running back duo. Love that right there. Think it's very safe with a lot of upside. Then DJ Moore, 
and Mark Andrews. I love that right there. With Tyler Boyd as our wide receiver too, not the most desirable, but when you have DJ Moore and Mark Andrews to go along with Miles Sanders, Josh Jacobs, and Kyler, I love that. Not to mention Cam Akers in our flex is phenomenal. We also have Marvin Jones in case Tyler Boyd isn't the best. Then we also have Zach Moss and Antonio Gibson to be pretty high, I mean, I won't say high risk running backs because we didn't invest huge capital into them, but they definitely are very risky. They could easily bust, but I do also think that there is some upside there. We have Jared Goff to back up Kyler Murray. That gives us quite a bit of security. We also have Jalen Rieger to add to our wide receiver depth. And last but not least, we have Goddard to fill in for Mark Andrews when he's on by and out with an injury. And also he could become trade bait if Goddard absolutely breaks out and takes over Zach Ertz's job as the Eagles' tight end one, or if Zach Ertz goes down, obviously Goddard is instantly their tight end one. So what would I give this draft? I'm going to say this is the best draft that I have done on this channel. This is an A draft. If I had a better wide receiver too, it would be an A+. But unfortunately, we don't have a better wide receiver too. You know, if Michael Gallup fell to me, it would probably be an A+. Plus. But still, we're going to give this draft an A. Most of my drafts have been B pluses and A minuses because that's kind of the best that you can get without being lucky and having people fall to you all the time. But in this draft, we had our guys fall to us more often than they got taken from us. So I really, really like this draft. This is an A draft. So looking back at taking Kyler in the early sixth round, considering that this was my highest graded draft, I would say if Kyler falls to you, or Dak, or Wilson, or Watson, in the sixth round and there's not value elsewhere, taking Kyler or any of those other quarterbacks is not a bad strategy at all. It can be very, very beneficial. This is my favorite team that I have constructed on this channel. So I really hope that you guys feel the same way. Let me know in the comments below if you're still watching how you would grade this team. Do you agree with me? You'd give it an A or would you give it something worse or something better? Let me know because I want to hear what you guys have to say. I make sure to reply to all comments. So I will definitely be responding to all of you guys who comment on this video. If you are new here, make sure to hit that subscribe button. If you are interested in getting more content like this almost every single day, I put out five to seven videos per week. So there's a lot of content coming out through the rest of the off season. If you enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button to show your support. It helps me a lot and it's free for you guys to do. So I'd really appreciate all that support. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you next time. Peace.